So we've got here Latavius Murray, Juwan Johnson, Jimmy Garoppolo, Darius Slay, and Will Fuller and Geno Smith. And just quickly, Latavius Murray, he was somebody coming off a pretty good season for the Ravens. He'd looked really good at times. I mean, you know, Lev Bell got cut because Latavius Murray was clearly a better player. He came in and took the job from Melvin Gordon. And he was top 36 running back in every game this season. Javon Johnson, third most uh, touchdowns at the position. He had seven. He feels like somebody who his ADP could get out of hand next year. How high would be too high for you to draft Javon Johnson in 2023? Anything above around 16, I want to say, around 16, 15. We don't know the quarterback situation. We don't know their coaching situation. Realistically, we don't. Who, who knows what that team's going to do? Um, but I, if he was better, I think Taysom Hill would be a lot worse for fantasy. And I think that the fact that Taysom Hill is so relevant kind of just makes me not trust Juwan Johnson. Anything about round 15 is where I ended at. Yeah, 37% of his points came from touchdowns. Jimmy G, obviously we spent the entire offseason drafting, thinking that Trey Lance would be the starter until – he either got injured or unless he lost the job. And then he lost the job after two weeks when he dislocated his ankle. So Jimmy G, he wasn't good for fantasy, though. Anybody who was heavily exposed to Jimmy G and counting on him to be fantasy relevant. He was the QB 19 in points per game. He had four top 12 weeks, but only one 20-point game. When Brock Purdy came in, he was QB 12 across his starts for the rest of the season. So Brock Purdy showed us that quarterbacks can be fantasy relevant in this system but jimmy wasn't is there a particular team where you can imagine jimmy go into next year where you'll want to draft a lot of him none not not one single team in the nfl where i would take him um and that doesn't mean that i believe jimmy g is bad i actually think jimmy g is a very competent quarterback but he just doesn't have a deep ball he any team that's taking him most likely is going to put him into some running style type of scheme where he's a game manager, you know, Colts type of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't I, see it. I, 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 pers- think, I don't see a situation where he throws three touchdowns consistently. But one of my issues with Jimmy G has always been like the lack of touchdowns for George Kittle. George Kittle, we know, is an incredible talent, but we saw it with Brock Purdy. George Kittle's uh, career highs in touchdowns this year in red zone. Uh, target simply because Brock Purdy was there and just absolutely latching onto him in the red zone, knowing that he can go up and just beat defenders. But Jimmy G never did that. Darius Slayton, he had seven top thirty set seven top thirty six weeks as a wide receiver three each of those weeks slots nicely into your flex. Average fifty five yards per game. All off season we kept hearing about how the Giants wanted to cut him, but they couldn't really move him on for anything. In hindsight, it doesn't really feel like we missed on this one because we didn't know that Kenny Galladay was going to be atrocious. We didn't know Sterling Shepard was going to get injured. So do you think that Darius Slayton is somebody you would like to draft going forward next year? Um, as someone that didn't take any of them this year, I will admit that I I had um, I had a very anti-Slayton, a very anti-Slayton, but for basketball purposes, I will take him next year and I should have taken him this year. If you ever look at the the Giants roster from this year, you know he was at least the wide receiver on this team, give give or take, right? Like Kadarius Tony was often on injured, Kenny G was often on injured, Sterling Shepard was often on injured, and there was no scenario where all three of those guys were playing at the same time. I just don't, I just don't see the scenario coming into the year going, who is their wide receiver three? And it should have always been the answer is Darius Slate, who is the healthiest guy on that team at the time, who is also the, the deep threat for that team. I, I think we got that wrong. I think if I had to redo it, I think signing a ton of Dar- I, Darius Slay would have been the move. Yeah. Uh, and I think next year will be the same situation. I think Darius Slay, if he's still on this team, you know, Richie James Jr., Isaiah Hodgett, whoever they draft, I think Darius Slay finds himself to be that deep threat. And as long as he gets you contribution weeks, I don't think it matters uh, how often they come. But you cannot tell me that if Darius Slay is on the field for all the snaps – that you don't believe that he's going to provide some fantasy relevance. In yeah. One player who had absolutely zero fantasy relevance, Will Fuller. I've got here is underdog average ADP from across the whole of last off season, May through to September from my friends at Rotovis here. And I didn't draft any round 18 Will Fuller 
because I was drafting Will Fuller in kind of round 12, round 13, and I was going, well, we know what Will Fuller is. When Will Fuller's healthy, Will Fuller is going to give us big fantasy weeks. And I don't care at this cost whether he's injured at times because when he's healthy, he's going to be great. But as it happens, I mean, Will Fuller has just, you know, completely disappeared off the face of the planet. Was Will Fuller somebody you drafted a lot of, Davis? No, 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 no. I'm not a Will Fuller guy. Uh, I, I bit the bullet one year, and that was last year. I would hear went to the Dolphins. I was like, oh, you know, he actually might be the best receiver on our team. He's going to put up. God, he played what five snaps or something, and it just never came back. Like two receptions. I, I think I was at that game that he just left, and never came back. <laughs> like <laughs> it was so bad, and I remember just going like I knew it. I should I should have seen it. You know, injury prone's a thing. Um, I I think William Fuller, you know, Will Fuller, however he was it, Will I am Fuller is what I'm start calling him. I just <laughs> he's someone I just cannot draft. I don't think I think anyone that was drafting him in August. Even July, I think you were just, just chasing a pipe dream. There's no there at this point. What is he? What was he going to do? You know, he's already. You know, he got busted for steroid usage. Can't stay on the field. I yeah. I the reason I wanted him on this list too is just I, I want people to remember that you, your 18th round picks, your undrafted picks. These guys do actually matter. And we listed a bunch of guys right now that end up panning out. Um, and Will and Fuller, who wasn't even on the team, are the same guys that took Gronk, are the same guys that took just these guys that were, hey, maybe he comes back and helps win this season. Like, no, they didn't. So I just really like to keep that pointed out. If they're not on a team by mid-July to early August, like, just move on. Like, do not waste your picks. Those those picks matter down the road. Yeah. I, I think hitting on your late-round picks particularly is such an important part. And, it's why I kind of tend to preach spreading out your exposure, particularly at this end of the draft. It can really matter because one player who I didn't have anywhere near enough of was Geno Smith finished as the QBA on the season, 10 top 12 performances, only five games below 16 points. And we saw across the early point of the season, he was absolutely dominating in efficiency metrics. He didn't manage to keep that going the whole year, but the bar he set at the start of the season was so incredibly high and, I just look back now and I think, okay, of course he was going to beat Drew Locke out. Like, we'd seen Gino play there when he played in a few games for Russell Wilson the previous season. And that standard was clearly higher than Drew Locke. Yeah, Gino Smith, definitely one of my biggest misses of this year. Major miss on my part. I, I didn't believe in Geno Smith. Um, and like I said, this compares to the Will Fuller situation. Like, this guy has a job. Quarterback is the easiest position to get some contribution out of, right? The fact if you can't contribute there, it just it just means that you weren't fancy relevant at all. So I I think that someone like Geno Smith, Samaji P. Ryan, any of these other guys that you could have taken make way more sense than taking Will Fuller. Um, so you know, props to Geno Smith for having a great year. I wasn't sold on him. I didn't believe that there was enough for him to be fantasy relevant, and I think we saw some of his weeks kind of fall off at times. He's very minimalistic. But um, he great. He made he made gave us Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf at a at overall good value. Mm-hmm.